Welcome back, guys, and greetings from Ponzi. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today, we're looking at, is it time for cheap cryptos in September? We've been checking September for a market pullback. Yes, we've seen it over the last few days. Do we have further to go? We'll look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, and one of the trades that I've been talking about on Twitter. So, make sure you're following over on Twitter and on Instagram for daily crypto updates. Like the video up. Share it around if you find some value from it. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this content. All right, let's dive in to the first piece and we're looking at the market caps. Got to keep an eye on where that money is flowing. Market cap is at 2 trillion, Bitcoin 45,000, ETH 3,300. Last 24 hours have seen most projects down except for a few of the outliers, Cosmos which is what we'll talk about later in the video. And we saw a little rise in Tezos and also Monero. Oh, and for the HBAR guys, your coin is doing pretty well too. I always see that in the comments. Why aren't you talking about HBAR? Well, because I don't trade it. Moving on, we're looking at the Bitcoin values. So Bitcoin is obviously zero and the rest of the market is holding up reasonably well. Some are moving up a little bit, some are down a little bit, some are down a lot. So, this is against the Bitcoin value, which is what I see as one of the most important metrics to look at when you are investing in cryptocurrency long term and also trading in cryptocurrency. You don't want your coin to be going down against Bitcoin. Otherwise, you're better off holding Bitcoin. So, the cryptos that are up over the last 24 hours are slightly polka dot slightly Litecoin because of the fake news, which we'll look at. Cosmos up nicely around 4%. We've got Tezos, Monero, and of course, HBAR. I'm going to leave eCash here, but HBAR is also up about 8%. Fear and Greed is on a downtrend. We're at 30 today. Yesterday was 44. And we can see lower highs and lower lows. So the Fear and Greed is on the way down. We want to see that this break back above around that 40 445, 46 level to start putting in higher lows again. So the market is still quite fearful. Solana is a crypto that we've been talking about and trading on the channel. Uh, at any point, this is a tweet from yesterday. If you sold at any point from 155 to the peak of 216, you could technically buy in cheaper again. So this is just something from yesterday's video. I was I, I did a video last week taking some profits on Solana. Some people got triggered and they just do exactly what I'm talking about in the video. This is not financial advice. It's not trading signals. I'm just letting you know what I'm doing and why. So hopefully you can learn from that. And if you do want to learn more about trading and investing, check out the Investor Accelerator. Keep an eye on these because sometimes one or two pop up. And if you want to get in at the 39, do that. Otherwise, grab to, grab on to the early adopters, 50 left out of 100, getting a few of these going per day. And then we move up to this bracket here. So get into the early adopters if you're interested in more around trading and investing in cryptocurrencies and uh, being a full-time long-term investor. Uh, so this is the tweet on Solana. If you sold out and you were pissed off at yourself, keep an eye on the charts because you can always get back in. So we've got several days down on Solana. And the main thing here is just to keep track of whether we get a push up to new all-time highs or whether it tops out some of the resistance at around that sort of 180 to 200 level, making a lower high. That is going to be a critical area. If you see a lower high on Solana, possibly some more downside. So obviously, we'll keep tracking that. Now onto the fake news, Walmart and Litecoin news deemed fake. Walmart, Litecoin payment news debunked by Walmart spokes. Person, LTC price shutters from fake news. So Litecoin put out a post saying they're going to get payments with Walmart. Walmart to accept Litecoin payments. The tweet is now gone. LTC price had a spike and all the way back down, as you can see from the open and the close. This is on a weekly chart and I've just posted on Twitter. So make sure you're following over there. If you were a holder, make sure you are checking out the Bitcoin chart. Litecoin, absolute downtrend over the entire life of Litecoin. Do this with your cryptos that you're following too. Check them out against Bitcoin because you've just lost a ton of Bitcoin value by holding Litecoin. Terrible, terrible long-term investment. But for trading, different story. You're in and out over the course of maybe weeks or months. So make sure you're following that 
if you are investing in any cryptocurrencies is the best way to figure out whether you are holding something good or something bad. Because long-term, Bitcoin is going up against the US dollar. Ethereum, Solana, NFT market cools off following late summer surge. So we're keeping an eye on this uh, as I've got here. Uh, NFT sales precursor to market dropping off. Just a bit of an idea. Maybe we're starting to see a bit of a slowdown. Yes, we saw some um, falls on Solana. We've seen some falls on Ethereum. The market for NFTs hits new peak in August. So the wider market momentum has eased up so far in September. So peak coming down in September. This is the NFT sales. NFT trading volume has fallen sharply over the last week plus. Data shows as top marketplaces cool off. So this is the likes of CryptoPunks up and ArtBlocks have seen significantly less movement. Current market activity is still well above that of the early summer lull. But the recent downturn may suggest waning enthusiasm for pricing digital collectibles, particularly amidst surging Ethereum transaction fees and sinking value for leading cryptocurrencies. Over the weekend, OpenSea recorded nearly 107 million. So that was over Saturday and Sunday combined. Compare that to 274 million worth of trading in the same span the previous week. So it comes and goes super quick in NFTs. And I guess if you're a serious NFT flipper, you're going to be keeping note of all of these sorts of metrics just to give you an idea of whether the market is still hot or cold and whether you're going to be risking everything on these NFTs. Hedge fund Dan Tapiero has invested more than $650 million into crypto's largest companies. Another piece here, institutions continue building on ramps while piling into crypto. So this is where I'm getting all this idea, uh, the idea here from. We're seeing September fall, but... There is so much buying going on or at least on ramps and interest of coming into the market. So time for cheap crypto in, in September is that here. I'm going to check this out on the Bitcoin chart to give you an idea where I think will be even better or even cheaper prices. Uh, and then the Bitcoin bullish news is this here as well. We've got a few of these. So 650 million into cryptocurrencies. T10 has invested a wide range of crypto firms including uh, Kraken, Ledger, eToro, Huobi, and Figure. There's a clear appetite from investors for exposure to these types of funds. It launched a second fund, invested more than $650 million across the two funds, and the firm's second fund has deployed about 80% of its capital. So in total, the firm manages around $750 million. SBF, whose firm FTX raised $900 million early this year, told The Block in a phone interview that the crypto private markets are out of balance. So it looks like there's just so much coming into these markets because they just want the gains here. The way I read this is I'm not going to get married to my coins, especially when these markets go haywire as they begin to break through their resistance levels. These guys are piling into the markets and they will leave the markets just as quick. They're not going to get married to any of these Ethereum, Solana, Cardano killers or colorful JPEGs by such and such on a Solana ecosystem. I don't believe they're going to be doing that, especially with their hundreds of millions of dollars. And they are obviously going to be pushing the market up and pushing it down. We know from data that about 90, 95% of the money in cryptocurrency at the moment in the big stuff is from the big money and 5% is from retail. All right, that's known out there in the space. So if the majority is looking to make money, they don't have any married ties to, like I just said, NFTs or ETH killers or any of that sort of stuff, then they're not going to be holding on to this stuff long term. They will be looking for the returns, especially when they're not getting it in other areas and then getting out again. Tapiero definitely sees old friends from Wall Street interested in what he called crypto money. So even SBF is talking about that. They want to get in they want to make the money. They want to give it to good companies. I'm not saying they're going to put all of it in and then pull all of it out, but you can bet your bottom dollar they are here to make money. People say to me, you're really doing crypto for boomers. It's a little bit of that, he remarked. Okay, Grayscale, more uh, bil uh, bullish Bitcoin news. Grayscale, an iCapital partner to provide 6,700 advisors access to crypto investments. Digital currencies are at the center of the conversation right now. So this is following on from hedge funds getting in. It's just over and over and over again. This is more uh, more money coming into the space. iCapital services more than $80 billion in client assets across more than 780 funds globally as of July 31. According to the company, New York headquartered firm has offices in Zurich, London, Lisbon, and Hong Kong. 
Advisors and their clients have expressed increasing appetite for uncorrelated return potential in their portfolios. I only think it's uncorrelated at this point in time. If the market continues up, more money is printed, I think it's going to be pretty similar across the board. We're seeing stocks go up, but not at the same rate. And of course, like we just saw with this article, the Wall Street guys, they're interested in getting their crypto money. There's more money uh, coming into cryptocurrency, but the gains are bigger in cryptocurrency at the moment. So they want to take some of those gains as well. And that's why these projects that are 500 million plus can still get massive returns. 500 million, that's what the valuations are looking like. Uh, they can't get into the small stuff. There's no point for them to get into a IDO that might be a $70,000 market cap. They need to go for the big stuff because that's what happens when you've got big money. El Salvador won't tax foreign investors on Bitcoin profits. So if you're looking for somewhere else to go after some of these tax laws come into the US, maybe even into Australia, maybe El Salvador is on the cards for you. Legal advisor to the Salvadorian president, if a person has assets in Bitcoin and makes high profits, there will be no tax. This is done obviously to encourage foreign investment. So I think this is going to be a competition as time goes on and this is going to come down hard. Well, I guess the US might come down hard on these sorts of countries because they want to keep tax in their country and if other countries are making it look more favorable to go there, the smart money, the big money are going to find ways to get there to obviously pay less in tax. All right, if you guys are looking to pay less in tax, why don't you get yourselves an SMSF? This is a self-managed super fund in Australia. Check out the link down below. New Brighton Capital will book your free 20-minute consultation. So you might have your super fund with something traditional earning you 4% per, per annum, taking fees and everything else off it. SMSF, call them to figure out whether it is something worthwhile for your super fund, whether you have enough funds in there, uh, and then you can figure out how you can structure yourself from that point. Use Pazino when you're signing up there. Um, this is for your free phone consultation. And when you complete your SMSF application, 150 bucks of free credit. First up, I wanna look at Bitcoin. So I mentioned here, time for cheap crypto in September. Bitcoin leads the market. I'm following the Bitcoin price and we see lower USD prices for Bitcoin. Generally, that spills across into the rest of the market. So if I'm following Bitcoin, that saves me a lot of time to not have to worry about so many other cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin's down, boom, I'll go for the cryptos, which have my alerts going off so I can see stronger setups, which I'll show you one of in just a sec. Uh, Bitcoin, this is my zone here, this purple box. If we drop back into this, then I like this as some cheaper Bitcoin. Obviously, I don't want to see it in here for too long. If we get some spikes into this zone, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Just come into here, push back up some wicks. So for bars, we're looking at spikes. For candles, we're looking at those wicks to come in here. Uh, this is probably my last resistance level. I don't want to see the market break any lower than that 37K, 37.5K. Uh, that is the swing low. So anything in this zone is great. If it does fall beneath this, then I just think we're going to be churning in this area for a lot longer. So there'll be more buying opportunities, but patience will have to increase. So as for September, this is what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting for a turn. We've been waiting for a bit of a correction. I don't think it's going to be too long considering we were up for nearly 50 days. So I'm looking for about one to three weeks in this period before we start to potentially climb our way forward. Of course, we're going to keep looking at that on the charts, but that's just my rough roadmap for my cheap cryptos in September. Ethereum, similar sort of thing, but it is stronger than Bitcoin. It's still holding above. It's This is the correction zone, so it's holding above its correction. So 50% is at 3,000. Bitcoin, on the other hand, has slipped under the correction zone. So it's slightly weaker at the moment. Ethereum in this zone, above that 24 to 29-ish hundred, that is the area that I think Ethereum looks a lot cheaper and I'll be definitely buying up bigger bags than what I was buying at on a breakout or on these correction bars. Uh, but for now, just waiting to see. It's back into this churny zone of 3,000 to about 3,400. So again, Ethereum slightly stronger than Bitcoin because it's above its 50%, so 3,000, whereas Bitcoin slightly weaker. Doesn't mean it's going to crash beneath its previous support levels. This is just what we look at when we're looking at the 50% zones. So that's my zone there looking in the purple for more ETH and for Bitcoin, that is going to tell me for cheaper cryptocurrencies overall. But the crypto that I've been looking at and I've posted about this on Twitter 
and also to our Patreon group. If you guys are interested, check out the link down below for Patreon exclusive content. Uh, I update the guys about the trades regularly and also weekly video updates on the entire market. Over to Atom, Cosmos. The main chart I'm trading here is the BTC pair. The breakout was just above 60,000 Satoshis. That's what it should be, not 6,000, 60,000. And we've spiked out into some resistance at the moment. So it's at about 9,000, eight to 9,000, approximately these levels here. All right, so this was a little congestion zone before the breakdown in 2019. And we're just trying to hold above these current levels at the moment. So we've broken out. Hopefully this is the break to take us to the next stage. So I've got a few targets here, mention these on Twitter. So make sure you're following over there as well. There was some recent positive news on Adam, which we could see in the charts earlier. So it just goes back to the old saying, show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. So the breakout through here was these levels about 55. And if you wanted the extra confirmation above the high, it was about 6,000. So I saw that news come out probably in the last couple of days. So the breakout has already occurred, I believe, prior to that news being known publicly by a lot of people. So just always check the charts. If you are getting yourself involved in some sort of longer term or short term trade, you can start to see these breakouts occur, especially um, when you're factoring in these 50% levels for support and another support and then the breakout. So that's Adam. We'll continue to follow up on that as well, but make sure you're following on Twitter because it's much easier to update you with these sorts of trades over there, just like I've been doing with Solana. I'll see you guys at the next video. So until then, have more fun to get more done.